<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the retro classics. So the box says over here, have a good time together. The question remains, is this actually true? Because sometimes the performance of these boxes are so bad that you don't have a good time at all. The device comes with many names and one of them is the mini home game. So it's absolutely like a tiny retro box where you can play all school games with. Or is it any good? I really love like say the text on this. So here you can see that it says here like positive. I have no idea why it says positive. Use connection handle on both sides or host. Or, you know like off host. Like what the hell is going on with those texts? It makes no sense to me. Okay so this is the 3160 model and yeah. That's it, like that's the only thing I can read basically. But the thing is, you do have like a couple of different models of this. So let's do a quick unboxing of this one and just play and let's see what are we going to get with this today. All right, so let's take a closer look inside the box itself. I reviewed a couple of these back in the day and I was curious how it is today. So when it comes to these controllers, oh man, it's all like a gamble. These are like the Yukon ones, like the Yukons are, let's say, 7 out of 10. They are like not the worst quality out there. Like when you're looking at the shoulder buttons, I don't know what's happening over here with by the D-pad. You can see like there's something happening with the controller. Maybe it's the do of the chemical plastic. We have like the semi, let's say, rubberized joysticks. Feels kind of very strange. It comes with an HDMI cable. It even comes with a VGA if you want to go all the way old school with an old school monitor. Another controller with a USB. Then we do get like this weird looking power supply. This version came with just your typical like the power supply of a Pandora's box. So this thing works on 12 volts. And in the box we're going to get ourselves the Mini Street Arcade box. Okay, so we do have like some more information in here. <laughs> I find it quite interesting to have like multiple boxes. So let's open it up and let's take a close look in the inside. And what, what I personally really like about these boxes is that we do have like everything that we're going to need. So do, first of all, we do have a ventilation in the inside or a fan for basically like cooling the CPU down because this is a major problem. So here we have like another name, they call, they call this thing like the Pandora Treasure. So, and also to call the Mini Street Arcade. It's quite confusing. We do get an on-off switch at the front. That's very unique, to be honest. In the left and the right, we do get a connection for the controller. Here we have the SD card. So adding games to this is absolutely like a nightmare. There's only like a 16 gigabyte. It's a very small collection. And here at the back, we do get ourselves the VGA, HDMI, the volume control. That's normal, typ normal typical Witcher Pandora's box. We're gonna get a separate volume control. This is the tiny button for going into the settings. Then we do get input for the 12 volt, 12 volt supply, uh, supply. And we do even have like an audio jack out. So I think the, this thing comes with quite an interesting yeah, specification or better said specification, like the way you can connect it. Because that is something of a problem with most of these bloody things. The menu looks a little bit similar like previous models I've reviewed, for example, the Pandora Box 5 and 6. And with the Pandora Box 9, yes, they made one big epic messy list. We have a lot of double games and a lot of homebrew games. Games that are modified, for example, the King of Fighters 99 boss. That means that we can play with the final bosses. Pressing up and down, we can skip to the next game. And at the same time, it will change out the little preview. You can see it the right of the screen. Pressing right and left on the D-pad, you can skip a full page. And it can give you, this, let's say, a more faster scrolling through the game list. But after all these years, they finally listen to us. When pressing the start button, you can go up all the way back. We have, of course, the recent list so you can play the game that you recently played. Or you can go search your games. Works like a charm. You really need to get used to it. But I'm very happy that they finally fixed it. So what we're going to do, we're going to change between games and we're going to play some. But first, let's talk about what kind of game. Because you already can see over here, we have an MD and I'm guessing this is Mega Drive. This is seriously the first Pandora version I've seen that is running the Mortal Kombat 2 and 3 main games. So that's quite interesting. But what is really cool that we're having a quick load and quick save options. I tested it out, it works with the 16-bit, it also works with Arcade and PlayStation 1. So when it comes to emulation performance with MAME, I must say that most of these games run pretty good. It's similar like the Pandora Box 6.
And the same applies for Neo Geo. It has a lot of good performance here, so there is no problem running that on a cheap system like this. Surprisingly, there were some lost PlayStation 1 games on the system, and the ones that are on the system runs pretty good. Another interesting feature that this game console also includes some 8 bit, 16 bit, and 32 x games. There are not a lot of them, and you need to find them through the big list, but when you find them, it's quite interesting to see it, because most of these versions, consoles, are running not a lot of 8-bit, 16-bit games, mostly they are save for the Neo Geo and main games. Okay, so the settings, here we're going to get some interesting options. Let's do begin about the Neo Geo console. It's on, and when I'm going to put it off, I have no idea what kind of differences. I've spoken with my buddy Emu Chicken just to see more like, hey, is there something they did extra with the Neo Geo consoles, like in BIOS, so you can recall, but I couldn't find any information or any weird things going on or special things with the Neo Geo console option. Especially all the other things that we can find on different Adorus boxes like background music and we turn it on and off, you name it, more similar stuff. But in overall, I think that this thing doesn't have a very horrible performance. It's always more like a mid bag and there are always some things that it can improve. But when you're trying out with the two player version and all of the other things, it works just fine. And the tiny box, personally I just like it. And the overall performance when you're looking at emulation is similar to the older Pandora Box 6. So this is basically what you're going to get with the Pandora's Treasure Pro Mini Street View. They call this thing by many names. Okay guys, so basically the Mini Street Arcade, or how you want to call this thing, it's quite outdated. It works on, let's say, old school, let's say, software, especially when you're looking at Pandora's boxes nowadays. The thing is absolutely outdated. The emulation just still have like a lot of problems when you're looking at so the first generation box. Think about Pandora Box 5 or 6S, it's similar to that. So it does have like some fun things on it, but yeah, when you're looking at the overall quality, including the controller, it's not like the best experience you will have. Yeah, adding a new controller, that is going to be a different story because these boxes are not compatible with a lot of controllers, so you're limited to the Chinese ones, like the cheap chemical knockoffs. I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become the Wicked Family, and it will be great to see you in the next video.